Hello folks and welcome back to Sewing Affair Sarah and welcome if you're new, my name is Jess, it's my channel all about sewing, dress making and all things stitch related. So the video you are about to see is all about the Stitch Festival and the Sew Yellow Ferrando party. So I hope you enjoy, I've given you my thoughts and then at the end of the video I'm going to show you a little bit of what I got, not much, but I got a couple of things, um, how I felt the day went and a little round up of Sew Yellow Ferrando as well. Good morning folks, so I totally forgot I was meant to be vlogging today and luckily when I woke up this morning I remembered, so hello! It is Saturday the 23rd of March, it is the day of um, Saturday at the Stitch Festival but it's also the day of the So Yellow Ferrando party! Hooray! Um, and it's the reveal day for So Yellow Ferrando. Now I was up late last night finishing, I finished my make like two days ago but I was gonna wear something with it, I had like a whole outfit planned and then yesterday was Oh, yesterday was a day and a half, my God. Um, and it was not possible. I was gonna make the sew over its empty skirt, but I didn't actually have time to go out and get a fly zip because I didn't have a lunch break yesterday. Um, and also, you know, when it's a new pattern and you've got the fabric and you've got the pattern and everything, you don't wanna mess it up because you're rushing um, because it is denim and, you know, it, there's some complex bits to it. It's not a difficult pattern but it's new enough to me that I didn't want to rush it and mess it up and get frustrated. So I'm going to leave it and I'm going to do it next week. So I'd like it to take Dorkney with me really. Um, but yes, anyway, so I made my outfit, which you will see shortly. I made another cashmere at Killerton in my fabric from Little Legs, which is the narrow and a handsome one, which you guys saw last week. And I made, I finished my yellow Ilford jacket, which is looking stunning, if I do say so myself. Um, I'm so excited, guys, it looks so gorgeous. So the plan is to get a cup of tea because I sound horrific and to take some medication. I'm gonna hop in the shower and wash my hair. Um, again, I was meant to do it yesterday, but we are where we are. I'm gonna blow dry it nicely so it's all straight and pretty. Um, and then we're gonna get dressed. We're gonna go to the Stitch Festival. Hooray. And then, crucial next step, we are gonna go to Sony Sunshine. We're gonna get ready. We're gonna do the goodie bags. We're gonna get the space ready. And then we're gonna do the Sony Yellow Ferrando party. Oh, so Adam is coming as well, which makes me really happy. Um, and he's gonna take some photos on one of my cameras um, so that I can use my phone and stuff for the day. I can see what stunning makes. Now, there is one other thing I wanna talk about, which is, sorry, my hand's shaking because I've not had my steroids yet um so forgive um for the first time ever we hit a thousand pounds we hit our target on the just giving page before the reveal day now that was that was enough in itself i was like oh my god this is insane this morning on the reveal day would you like to know what the total is the total is currently 1528 what and we're only like a couple of hours into the reveal. I'm getting donations constantly. People are posting their makes. Plus about 200 quid from the party as well has been raised. So there's actually a very real chance that not only will this year be the most successful year ever, we might hit 2K this year, which means we've raised over 6,000 pounds for Endometriosis UK. So I'm not saying anything at this point because we might not, but guys, we might. That'd be so cool. I said nearly swore there and I don't want to have to edit this. Oh my god, that would be so cool. So I'm gonna get dressed because currently this is my vibe. We'll get some tea, we'll get some breakfast, and then I'll chat to you while I'm getting ready. But it's gonna be a great day, guys. Okay, folks, as usual when I'm filming this, I can't see you because I don't have my glasses on. Um I don't want to wear my contacts today. I feel like glasses is it's just a it's a long day. Like I don't mind. Pre-COVID, I used to wear my contacts for like 16 hours a day. But I really haven't gone back to that. I think because I like my glasses more and also my eyes are a little bit worse. Um, not that much, I mean, I'm still blind as anything. Um, and have been for years. But yeah, I find um, it's a bit health, like a bit more helpful. Also, I have a couple of scratches on my um, cornea from when I've been traveling and stuff has got in my contact lenses. So like I've got one from when I got like sand in my contact lenses. It was a holiday. So um, I'm blind, basically. That's the intro. Um, so today we're going to the Stitch Festival. So if you haven't been to the Stitch Festival before, it is held at the Business Design Center, which is a venue, I'll be honest, I loathe. Um, and also I know anecdotally from other professionals that it's a nightmare to load into. So I really feel for the businesses 
Like it's it's logistically challenging, I know that. It's also quite an expensive show. However, however, there are lots of lovely sewers going today. So really the point of going today is to be social and to meet lots of people I have only ever spoken to online for the last like four years. Where is my foundation brush? What's going on here? Oh yeah, there we go. Um, so, it's, we're gonna be social. If we buy anything, I might like buy some buttons and buy us buying that kind of stuff. But frankly, I've got so much to take to the Sayo Ferrando party. I'm gonna to have to check a bag in the cloakroom. You'll see the size of it when we go. Um, big square bags, it's full of all the stuff but goodie bags. Luckily, it's not very heavy because it's all like paper, but it's just bulky. So we're gonna to have to check that in the cloakroom. So the plan is, we're gonna to go to the Stitch Festival. We're gonna spend the morning there. We're gonna go grab some lunch and then head over to Sony Sunshine via Sainsbury's to get all the drinks and food and stuff. I was gonna get them yesterday, but then I realized I, was like, I don't wanna to have to carry that around London. And I mean, it's in London, like I can get the stuff I need. Um, so that should be fine. Oh, I love this new foundation, guys. I've changed, you know when you change your foundation, it's like changing your hairdresser, you go, oh my God, I'm gonna do this now. Um, and actually it's great. Like, I'm so impressed. It's nice and nice and fluid. So, who am I looking to see at the Stitch Festival? Well, Yvette is coming this afternoon, but I'll obviously go say hi. Um, Fabric Lady Steph, who used to run the rag shop, and we've had so many wonderful chats. She is helping on one of the stands, so I'm gonna go see her. The Northern Soul Sisters are around, so I'll hop and see them. Um, and of course, Secret Girl is coming to the Sonia Ferrando party later, although she's not coming to the Stitch Festival. So what I'm gonna do is feed back to her, and if it's really good, we're gonna to go together next year, I think, which would be nice. Because I loved going to the ABC with Sam, it was really nice. Um, oh my God, I really need to resurrect my face today. It's, because I stayed up late serving, which is like the story of my life before an event. Sorry, I'm tired, I stayed up late making my outfit. Um, but yeah, so the Stitch Festival is in the Business Design Center. It's not a huge venue. It's not the size of like Alexandra Palace. It's smaller. There's a weird number of stairs. I don't know if they've changed the design of the sewing stalls this year, but I didn't think it was the most accessible venue I've ever been to. Also, anyone who's followed me for a few years will remember that the Stitch Festival is also where Scongate occurred, um, which features on a podcast episode, um, which comes out next week. But yeah, when I went two years ago, I went, so I'd done a half day of work. I went on like the Thursday or the Friday, I think. So I went for the afternoon and I went to get a scone. And I went to the catering counter and I said to the guy, oh great, can I get a scone? And he goes, yeah, like it's the last one. So I'm like, brilliant. And I say, is there cream and jam? He goes, yeah. And he gives me this plain scone. And I go, oh great, can I have the cream and jam please? And he goes, there isn't any. And I was like, but you, you, you just said there was. There wasn't even any butter, guys. It was just a toast. It wasn't even a fruit scone. It was a totally plain scone. And I looked at him like, what, what am I meant to do with this? And he just looked back at me utterly baffled. So I have a personal vendetta against the Stitch Festival catering. Um, not the Stitch Festival, because it's, it's not their fault. It's the Business Design Centre. It's the contractor they use. So I'm quite excited to see if that's changed and to see what the layout is. There's so many fabulous people. I think for me, the benefit of the Stitch Festival is less about shopping and it's more about socialising. Um, and obviously, like, literally, I'm going this year just to see people and say hi and wander around and also be visibly yellow on the reveal day of So Yellow Horrendo. Um, so we'll go there. I think I'm going to be there from, like, what, about 10.30 till about 1. Then I'll leave, grab lunch, go to the shops, head over to Chiswick to go to Sony Sunshine and then we will get ready for the party which is so oh my god guys it's so exciting I can't even like I just can't believe it's all happening you know what I mean it's it feels it feels real this year has been huge and it makes me feel so good because it means it, it can grow like the first year we still haven't caught up the first year's fundraising actually because that was 1,700 and 1708 I think um I just know that number um so we're nearly there we've nearly caught up with the first year's fundraising um obviously the second year is always difficult because you're sort of establishing you know you get a new challenge and then you do it again um oh, come on. so 
it's actually grown strength for strength. It's been really nice meeting people like at the NEC talking about it. It's been really nice as well how international our audience this year has been. We've had some great um, American subscribers. I've loved the Instagram Live program. We've got another Instagram Live though next week, so do listen into that. Right, okay, that's me ready to go. Um, I'm gonna leave in a sec. It's my outfit. I'm gonna actually, do you know what? I'm gonna put you sideways in the living room and show you my outfit. Adam's just gone to Jiu Jitsu, but he's coming to the party later as well, which is so nice. Um, also, I'm really happy with my hair today. Really, really enjoying this. Very, very spring vibe, so let me show you. Excuse the slightly impromptu camera setup because I'm on my way out the door, but here is my outfit. So this is the Cashmere at Kinnerton. I was ambassador for the Cashmere at Club, so I got this pattern to test um, and I love it. It's got pockets. It's quite a nice length as well, if I stand back. It's like just below my knees. It's meant to have a bigger hem, but I actually wanted it longer so that in the summer it's sort of a bit breezier. I've got my little tan boots on and then I've got my Ilford. So incredibly yellow very spring vibes um this is my finished elford so i'll stand here you guys chose poppers so we went with poppers my beautiful lining i've got a little hand warmer pockets as well look how cute that is um but yeah i'm chuffed with this so i'm gonna grab my bag and then we'll get going I'm here at the Stitch Festival. I've just had a very nice time doing an English pattern paper piecing. Oh god, I got it. DPP. Um, with Lauren from Sewing Bee, who I know from Instagram, so that was really nice. And I'm having a little wander around, which is really lovely. Um, and I'm going to go and try and find some sewing friends. So I'm just stepping outside of the party at Sony Sunshine. I am so overwhelmed by how how many people are here and how how much money. We are at 1902 so far, which is wild. Um I am I am like so emotional, but it's so lovely and there are so many fabulous people here. I will get some photos of everybody. I've put some footage in hopefully as well. Um and we're having such a lovely time. I can't believe this is this is so fun. Here is my outfit again in the daylight, loving it. Um and I honestly like I'm so grateful for all of these fabulous sewing people. Ah, it's so fun guys. Um if you haven't come this year and you'd like to, we will be doing this again next year, so keep an eye out and it's coming your way. <laughs> Firstly, thank you all so much. There are people in this room who have shared their stories on Instagram Lives, are going to share their story, who have donated, who have shared in Instagram posts, who have wonderful conversations with their friends, family, who have helped us raise money. This is the fourth year of So Yellow Ferrando, and it is baffling to me that we are now here in person. Um, we have raised so far, hang on, £1,928. <laughs> but that isn't including the ticket income from this event. Wow. So, so far, and the day is not over, we have raised £2,128. <laughs> so, that means we have raised over £6,000 in the last four years. Oh, amazing. Yeah. You are all amazing. This physically wouldn't be possible without all of you. It really wouldn't. It would just be me shouting about menstrual health. So thank you so much. It means the world to me, to everybody, to the women who are now messaging me saying they've had confidence to get an appointment. It's one in 10 women. It's over eight years to get a diagnosis. There is no cure and it does not go away. You can mitigate it. You can have your surgeries. For me, I will have at least two more surgeries in my life probably. That is pretty much guaranteed. It is a really challenging condition to live with, but it's so much easier when everyone else around you knows what it is, they believe your experience, 
that money goes into research, that you have the confidence in yourself to know something is wrong. Mm -hmm. So everyone's homework for Sonia Labrando, as always, is go and have a lovely conversation with someone about mental health. <laughs> if someone tells you they don't want you speaking about it, please ask them why. It's always my favourite conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> why not? Um, but thank you all so much. So please enjoy the rest of the party. Yeah. Grab a goodie bag. Lots of our sponsors have put lovely things in there. Um, do share photos. There's a cute little poster of the party, so if you do want to get any photos with the poster, please do. I will take endless outfit photos for people. <laughs> so but thank you all so much for being here, and enjoy! Okay, so, wow, yesterday <laughs> yesterday was a lot. Um, so we're going to start with So Yellow Ferendo, and then I'll talk about the Stitch Festival. The So Yellow Ferendo event was amazing um it was so lovely so the wonderful team at sony sunshine photos here um helped us harriet donated the space for the event uh you were able to buy fabric if you were there i, I bought some as well because it's hard not to when you're in a room surrounded by fabric just going, oh, that's pretty um but the event was amazing so i have to say thank you to harriet and mitzi and to sam sequin girly for just arriving slightly early and helping me because the stitch festival was so overwhelming in the morning and we're going to talk about that in a sec um and thank you as well to adam who came along he met me at earl's court station where i was loaded down with bags having been to the stitch festival had all the stuff with goodie bags and had been to sainsbury's to get all the food and drinks and i was i was having a moment and adam was like i'll meet you at earl's court and bless him he met because he was coming from the other way and he met me at earl's court and basically just picked up all the bags and I was like, oh, I love you so much. Um, Cause I was, I, I was very overwhelmed. Um, but Adam did all the goodie bags, took loads of photos. So did Sam, uh, Harriet and the team were so kind, clearing up the space and making it all beautiful. Um, and it was so nice. I got to meet so many of you and have such wonderful conversations. So if you watch my vlogs and you attended the party, let me know in the comments below if you had fun. Um, I'm definitely doing it next year. It was so lovely and like honestly, my heart is very full right now. Not least because we have raised £2,190 as of the point of recording today. Now, that is not including ticket income because Eventbrite won't let you have your ticket income till a few days after the event just to make sure it actually happened. Um, so hopefully I can then add that that's a further 170 180 somewhere around there so we'll be basically at 2300 pretty much which is it's just mental it's completely mad um I started this challenge in my bedroom in lockdown uh 2021 and now here we are I I've been on catwalks this year I've done podcast episodes another one coming out um on the so disorganized pod as well so look out for that um, I have done catwalks, I have, I got onto the Stitch Festival main Instagram yesterday actually, they asked me to do a piece to camera for another video because they were like, your outfit looks fully new made, come do this, and I said yes on the condition that I can also talk about Zoe Ferrando. so they let me do a piece to camera for their stories, um, which was great, it was really really nice and they linked the Just Giving page and that was really, oh, God. do you know what, it was so cool. So many people show me their yellow outfits. Instagram turned fully yellow yesterday and there is just no better feeling than looking looking at all of these people, sharing their amazing makes, talking about the conversations they've had, talking about their own experience, saying why they're doing it. It's, it's so special and I am incredibly emotional. Yesterday was so lovely and I cannot... I cannot express, I'm gonna weep again, I cannot express how grateful I am to all of you for supporting this challenge. We will always grow, we will get to bigger and better things every year, but most importantly, we will keep having conversations about menstrual health. Um, I spoke at the party to say thank you to everyone, which I've included, but I am, I am just, I'm just overjoyed. It was such a special time. Um, and thank you all so much for posting your amazing blogs, for sharing your makes, for, for truly turning Instagram yellow. I've been, I barely looked at my phone yesterday because I'll be honest, it was vibrating itself off the table. So it just went in my bag, um, unless I was filming. And then every, whenever I had a minute, I looked through people's makes and commented, but there were so many. <laughs> so I've spent a lot of this morning 
doing that as well but oh my god it was so wonderful and thank you all for sharing your personal stories with me if you have done that thank you oh my goodness now I'm going to talk about the Stitch Festival and then I'm going to talk about the fabrics I bought at both the Sayona Friendo party and the Stitch Festival so we're going to do it that way right so the Stitch Festival the I'm going to term it as the good and the bad so for me I would still argue the primary function of the Stitch Festival is social and I argue this for two reasons firstly I would say it's the biggest show people actually travel for and they come down for people travel for the knitting and stitching show but it feels like a lot more people come to the stitch festival I think it's at an easier time of year the other reason I think it's mainly for socializing is because it's so narrow and so busy I couldn't actually get near enough any stands to look at any fabric I could barely buy anything yesterday because it was so hard to see what was happening I feel like I needed two days one to figure out where everything was and make a plan and then the second day to actually go shop um don't get me wrong it was fantastic to see so many sewing businesses in one place and it was brilliant I met so many people guys so um I kicked off with a little workshop with Lauren from Sewing Bee we chat quite a lot in DMs um <laughs> Lauren said yesterday we chat a lot putting the world to rights which is true um and it was so nice to actually get to meet and chat to her I did her English paper piecing workshop uh which she, what she was hosting joint with Narissa um and that was really really cool we got a cute little photo because we've been saying we get a photo for ages so there we are looking adorable um I bumped into the sewing gardener as well uh Lucy and I again have chatted for ages it was so nice to meet her in person um and we obviously got a photo because you know you're not going to otherwise like we don't meet each other in person often all of us so that was lovely um I bumped into Steph from who used to run the rag shop she was helping on the pigeon mushes stand I bumped into Vicky from sewing bee as well again who I already chat to you know every now and then so that was lovely and of course um Meg from Pig pigeon mushes as well so that was so nice I didn't get photos with them but we did have a nice chat which was really really nice um I met I bumped into loads of people actually um I saw the wonderful daily thread so number 65 um I put a photo of us there looking adorable um I who else so I missed so do it Emma completely I missed the northern soul sisters completely I know they were there but it was so busy I couldn't see them anywhere when I was walking around so I just thought you know what we're all in different places it's a busy day let's just all have a nice day um however I do want to spot like one particular vlogger who I met for the first time and I don't think I could have scripted a better meeting with her so the fabulous wonderful Judy from Run Judy from running so and so is one of the nicest people in the entire world. I'm just gonna say it, I, there is not a bad bone in her body. She is a joy. And I, I say this for multiple reasons. Judy and I have chatted for years. Um, we both have severe asthma, so we chat about that quite a lot, which is really nice. Um, not for both of us to have it, but to have someone else to talk to about it. Um, she is a staunch supporter of the So Yellow for Endo campaign and she's generally a joy so please watch her vlogs she's great now one of my favorite things about the way i met judy was bearing in mind i'd been at the stitch festival for about i'd say about an hour and a half maybe two hours max i was getting a bit overwhelmed because it was so busy and so hot and i was starting to feel a bit faint and like really there were just too many people i couldn't look at anything like, i was really stressed so I went in to get a cup of tea and I queued for I'd say probably about 15-20 minutes for a cup of tea. Um, the catering at the business design centre is still shocking, I'm gonna throw it out there, it's just it's so hard to find something to eat and something to sit down, which is an event manager, they are the core tenants of an event. You have to have somewhere to sit, something to do, something to see, something to eat and somewhere to go to the loo. Those are the things you have to be able to do and frankly finding something to eat at the business design centre is like finding a four leaf clover. So anyway, I queued for a cup of tea, I got to the front of the queue and the young man said oh we don't have any hot water and I, I, I nearly lost my mind. I did, I wasn't rude to him but I literally looked at him and was like are you serious? And he was like yeah and then a couple of women behind me in the queue were like dude the, like everyone in here is having a hot drink like 
where is your hot water? And then he suddenly went, oh, oh, there's some coming, there's some coming. And then a lady arrived with some, but I was like, I'm not getting out of the queue and queuing again for a cup of tea. Like I will just leave and get one outside. Um, so I did, I, you know, I was like, oh good, thank you. Got a cup of tea, there's an absolute thimble of tea for an obscene amount of money. Um, but this, you have to imagine, this is the mindset I'm in. And then I walked out of this room clutching my, you know, cup of gold basically. Um, and I stopped and I was like, oh God, I don't, there's nowhere to sit down. And then suddenly I heard Jess and it, she ran. Judy literally ran over, gave me the biggest hug. And I'm like holding my tea out here so I didn't spill it on her. Um, and she gave me such a big hug. She was like, come over, come sit with all of us. So I met some fabulous, Judy is a social dynamo. It was great. She introduced me to so many people and it was so lovely. And I actually got to sit and have a rest and chat to me. I went, Guys, it was so nice. She was so lovely. I was honestly like, I, I was just so nice. So I sat, had a chat, I met the lovely French Seams and we took a photo of her So Yellow Friendo entry um, with me, which was really nice. Um, I met, I think I met Devon Fred Tales. Again, I'm really, really bad with names. I'm, I really shouldn't be bad with names. I need to get better at it, but I think I was so stressed yesterday. I was just like, yeah, I've recognized your face, hooray. Um, I also bumped into um, Happy Space Creates. I bumped into Bonnie on my way out, which was really nice. Um, I'm sure I saw loads of other people yesterday. I must have, but all in all, fantastic day. Absolutely loved it. Um, but yeah, the Stitch Festival, I, I don't think I'm gonna go on the Saturday again. I might go on like the Friday or something, but I don't know because it seems to have been busy all the days. It's it's a great event for the businesses that have, like for the range of businesses that are there. So as a, as a consumer, you go and you go, oh, that's that brand and there's loads of patterns. And you know, that was really good. I think in terms of design, they still need to do some rejigging because they shouldn't have the stage for one of the talks right in the middle of the stands because it creates a bottleneck whenever there's anything popular on, you actually can't get past to the stands at the end. So feeding back. Um, the workshops, I've heard, I've heard good things. Um, I didn't go to any this year because again, I just didn't have the day, like I didn't have a whole day. Um, but I did think it was nice. I liked that they've made the catwalk and workshops in the side room with um, food and drinks because I think that's a better activation of that space. Um, and I really like that they've put some of the workshops in, in among the stalls so you didn't feel like you had to go off to a separate venue to take part in stuff. So I did do obviously the English paper piecing one, which I dropped into and actually I wouldn't have seen that if it was somewhere else. So that was really lovely. But no, it was a really nice day. Um, is it my favourite show of all of the shows? I think I need to go back to the Knitting and Stitching show at Ali Pali once more. Possibly this year, because then I will have done three in a year. And I can sort of, I might do a video ranking them once I've done that, to be fair. Um, but it was, it was a good day. I think, I think the, the, the sort of, the top line is the Stitch Festival is definitely, in my opinion, the most overwhelming because there's a lot of tight, narrow spaces. The balconies up top are very tight. You really have to, in the words of someone who was at the So Yellow Friendo party yesterday, you have to get your elbows out to make it work. Um, and I really think that that was, that damaged my experience a little bit, I would say, because I found it, it wasn't, it wasn't as relaxing as the NEC was not um but it was really nice um and i like the social aspect i like how many people i got to see there was a big vlogger meetup which i fully missed i don't know if that happened after i left um but that was very sweet and seeing photos of people and stuff um but it was really nice to get to meet people in real life now shall i show you what fabric i got okay we are fitting the rest of this vlog in quite a tight window because there's people coming to look at our house but i'm going to show you my fabric so this is my big bag from, this is not all full of fabric, it's just, this is my bag from Sony Sandra. I bought at the Stitch Festival one fabric, just the one. And here it is. This is from Rosenberg and Sons and it's linen. Now you guys will know I never normally buy linen, but I bought this for two reasons. Firstly, it's such good quality, like, oh my God, it's good quality. I can tell it's gonna get softer as I wash it, but it's lovely and smooth. It's not too rough. It doesn't make me itchy. Normally I touch linen and it's like, touch like a blackboard on my floor. Um, but no, it's so beautiful. And I just thought the color, it, it's coming up a little lighter than it is in real life. It's incredibly vibrant. It's like a deep scarlet, vibrant red. And my plan is, 
I've been thinking about this. I was going to make a dress in it. I thought I'd make another cashmere at Kinnerton. I did. I thought I would. But I'm actually tempted to make some bright red size me sewing saran trousers. Because <laughs> I think that would be really cool. So let me know in the comments if you think I should make a dress or bright red trousers. Let me know because I really am 50-50. It's such good quality though as well. So then I bought two fabrics at Sew Me Sunshine at the end of the party. And one of them... Sam and I are gonna do a collab on. It's this amazing like 80s candy sort of vibe Sirisaku. And Sam and I are gonna do a collab. Now in this light, it doesn't look like it suits me very well, but actually in the daylight, it looks really pretty. Um, Sam is gonna make a dress. I am gonna make a dress. I got a meter, because I'm either gonna make a dress or a top. I might be able to get a little dress. I, I'm thinking I might get a Tammy handmade pre out of it, but I don't know if I'll get it out of a meter. So final fabric I want to show you is this one here and it's stunning and it's quite, it's beautiful. But it's also maybe a little out of my normal zone. So this is a white cotton voile with these little daisies embroidered on it. And the second I saw it, I just knew like, that this, this is just so beautiful because it's white, but it's not boring. Um, and I love the embroidery much more than a pattern. I'm a big fan of embroidered fabric. It's so lightweight, I can like see through it. Um, my plan for this is some kind of beautiful midi length floaty summer dress with like a fairly full skirt and like just, I love a white summer dress, I really do. I want something I can wear on holiday, but also that I can wear in the UK with like sandals. Um, and just feel like floaty and beautiful. Um, and the second this one, I got two meters so that I have all of the options. Um, I'm thinking maybe something with like a V and a button down front, maybe the McCall's Dawn dress. I'm not gonna put it on screen because I can't, um, I might, uh, I might do, we'll say 8104 I wanna say. Um, maybe, maybe that, maybe something. I don't know, I want recommendations from you guys actually. That's why I don't want to share it because I want free, free recommendations guys. So something with a sort of short sleeve, a deeper V and a long skirt, like midi. I don't want it too wide, but I want it to have a bit of swish. That's kind of where we are. But this is from Semi Sunshine. Um, I think it's like 19 pounds a meter, but there was a discount running uh, yesterday for the party. There still is a discount running, I think until tonight. So go, go, go if you can. Um, so that's all I got actually. I got this fabric. I got my lovely seersucker and I got the red linen and that's it. I was gonna go back and get some buttons and some labels from Pigeon Wishes and I was gonna try and find Specky Seamstress finding as well but I just, I couldn't make myself go back in and try and actually shop and find shops. It was a bit too stressful for that. Like, yeah, I, I don't know, it was a bit too much for me really. Um, like it was a lovely day to see people. It really was, it was really nice. And I do think the social aspect of these shows is probably the most important really because I mean obviously it's you know it's nice to go buy stuff and everything and that's fun but we do a lot of us do so on our own in rooms and we communicate through Instagram and we talk to each other on YouTube and everything and Sequin Girly Sam is it always says that like it's that connection it's getting people together and I do think that's why these shows are important I wouldn't say the Stitch Festival made me want to buy anything because it was so overwhelming. So in some ways, I think they could reorganize the space to make it more social, or frankly, frankly, move to a bigger room or a bigger venue, because it is a bigger show now. I think it's grown from what it was. I don't think it should be at Ali Pali. I think there's other venues in central London that would be a better fit, um, but it would be nice to see the Stitch Festival move somewhere a little bit bigger where it that can accommodate the number of people who now go and then the amount of additional activity. And um, so yeah, that's that would be my thoughts, but I love my fabrics that I got and I'm really excited to get so. So all that remains for you to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog, particularly after I did the Sewing for Pleasure show last week. Uh, next week, I will film a little vlog over Easter telling you all about my plans for April, where I'm going, what we're up to. Um, but until then, thank you again for supporting So Yellow Ferrando. If you did, if you didn't, please consider getting involved next year. Um, and it was lovely to meet you at the Stitch Festival. I'm sorry if, I, if there's any of you I haven't mentioned, but it was so lovely to meet all of you and I had such a great time. So have a lovely rest of your weekend, guys. Have a great week and we'll see you over Easter.